Question number 19 says, a 1400 newton crate, so that's its weight, not its mass, a 1400 newton crate is being pushed across a level floor at a constant speed by a force of 330 newtons at an angle of 20 degrees below the horizontal, as shown in the figure below. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the floor? All right, so um, first we want to figure out what forces are going on. So if this is 330, so x1, we're just going to, let's just do it algebraically. So x1 equals, it is, uh, so we want to know the, the um, leftward force. So if it would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so f times cosine 20. And x2 is simply the, let me re redo that, the friction, the kinetic friction. So um, now we've got to figure out what the kinetic friction is. So kinetic friction equals n times the coefficient of kinetic friction. And this is what we're trying to solve for. Well, what's n? <coughs> well, n is a combination of two things. n equals the, the weight of the box, which is the mass times the acceleration, the force, or the weight in newtons. So it, it gives us this 1400. So 1400 plus any downward um, push that we get from that. So we would get um, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that would be that would be F sine 20. Now that I'm, I'm looking at this, this doesn't look like a 20 to me. There we go. Over here on the cosine. That's a 20. Okay, so that would be our, our normal force. So the, the force going down is counterbalanced by a force going up from the ground to the crate. So we, we, could, uh, we could say that this F of K equals 1400 plus this other force sine 20 all of that in parentheses times this um, it's it's not an M it's a mu mu uh, mu K of the, the coefficient of kinetic force and then we can we can say that x1 and x2 are equal why can we say that they are equal because it says on here that it's it's being pushed across a, a level floor at a constant speed. So constant speed means that the initial velocity equals the final velocity. And so whenever you do VF minus V, or whenever you do VF minus VI, and you you get zero. So VF minus VI divided by T zero minus over T acceleration is zero. And so if you have a mass times an a, an acceleration that's that's zero. So the net force the for the net force has to also equal zero. So that means the force acting in in the x one direction should be counterbalanced by the force acting in the x2 direction. So we can say that force times cosine 20 force times cosine 20 equals is the same in magnitude as the 1400 plus as 1400 plus the force sine 20 times the coefficient of kinetic. At this point, all you got to do is um, put in your knowns. So the, the F is, uh, the force is 330. So 330. Um, and then it goes in here again, 330. And then you can um, do your math and solve for this coefficient of kinetic friction. 
So 330 times the cosine of 20, um, this equals 310, and and 310 is equal to the uh, 1400 plus 330 times sine of 20 times, okay, so is equal to um, 1512.86 mk. And so if we do the division, 310 divided by this 1512, it's the, the coefficient of kinetic friction equals 0 0.2049. And so you can round that up to 0 0.205 if you want. That would be fine. And then the next thing it asks, we're going to go back to this. And it, it asks, so if that is the, if, if the, the, coefficient of kinetic friction that we found in, in A, if that's still true over here in B, what would the new, what would the acceleration be for, for this system? And so here's what has changed. So our, our X1 has not changed. Our X1 was, was 330, um, let me erase that, X1 was our force times cosine of 20, which was 330 cosine of 20 was equal to 310. And so 310.1 if you want to round. So it has not changed, but what has changed is that now we have some up on here. So, so we would say 330 times the sine, so um, opposite over hypotenuse, 330 times the sine of 20, is is being taken away from the the weight so 330 sine 20 um, is is being subtracted from the 14 instead of being added to the 1400 it's being subtracted from the 1400 before it gets multiplied by um, our coefficient and so what we get here from from this term is 1287.133 so get to a clean actually this is fine so 1287.133 times mk times 0 0.204 or we'll just say 0 0.5 and this this equals a force. It equals a force that we're subtracting from x1. So this this is going to be our x2 value. X1 is 310. This is going to be our x2 value. It's going to be it's going to be 2 263.86. And so we'll just say 264. And so if we want to know our net force 310 minus 264 it's 46 newtons and so then we gotta figure out the mass so that's our force we gotta divide it by mass to get acceleration so if, if we have a, a force a downward force of 1400 and that is divided by the acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, that's going to give us our mass. So 1400 divided by 9.8. So we have a mass of 142.86. And so we need to divide that mass by over here to get the, accelerate, the new acceleration. So 142.86, 46 divided by 143 and our new acceleration is 0 0.32167 um, I was a little bit more precise on my decimals uh, when I plugged it in I got 0 0.32 um, 9.69 and that's what I plugged in and it was just fine so the difference being so small I don't think it's gonna matter